This is video number two covering chapter two of your computer systems textbook. This video will cover section two of chapter two. We'll talk about unsigned and two's complement integer representations. These functions show how to translate groups of bits into unsigned and two's complement integers. We'll look at some examples to illustrate what these functions mean. So, just to be clear, this function, this b2u of x, shows us how to convert bits into an unsigned integer, and b2t of x shows us how to convert bits into a two's complement integer. So let's take a look at one example for unsigned integers and two examples for two's complement integers. In the functions here shown above, w means the word size. The lowercase x stands for the value of a bit, and the i's indicate the index of the bit. The capital X represents the whole bit string, or the whole grouping of bits. Each of the three bit strings we'll look at will have a word size of four. So let's label the indices of the bits for each example. We'll start out with the least significant bit at index zero, and the most significant bit will be at index w minus one. So for unsigned integers, we multiply the bit value by two to the power of the index and sum the results. For two's complement, we just change the sign of the most significant bit times two to the power of the most significant bit index. So multiplying and summing gives us the results for all of the examples. So let's take a look at the unsigned example first. In index zero, we take the value, which is one. So we have index zero, we take the value of x, which is one multiply that by two to the zero, which gives us one. For the next two, we have zero values, so we don't have to worry about those, those just ends up being zeros. And for the most significant bit, we have a one as the bit value, so we multiply by two to the third, and we get eight, and we just sum all that up, and finally we end up with a value of nine for the, this unsigned integer. Two's complement is gonna work the same way, and we did two examples because I wanted to show you what happens when you have a one as the most significant bit versus when you have a zero as the most significant bit. Let's get rid of all those. So we do pretty much exactly the same thing, except you'll notice up here in the two's complement b2t of x uh, function, the first bit, we still sum everything, but we sum from i equals zero to w minus two, as opposed to the unsigned where we sum from i equals zero to w minus one. That's because w minus two is the second most significant bit, where w minus one is the most significant bit, and that one is what we wanna care about as far as signs go, because that most significant bit is multiplied by negative x. So what that looks like for through both of these examples is we take the zeroth bit, so first we'll talk a look, take a look at the example with a zero in the most significant bit. We multiply things out just like we would, one times two to the zero is one, zero times two to the one is zero, two times two squared is our four here, and zero times two to the cubed, and then that whole thing negative it's still gonna be zero, of course, because we have a zero for our x. So we add all that up together and we have five. Now, for the example with one in the most significant, as the most significant bit, we do the same thing. We multiply zero times one, or actually one times one, one times two to the zero, and we get one. We multiply zero times two to the one and we get zero. Zero times two squared and we get zero. Now one times two cubed, that whole thing negative, so we got eight times one is eight. We subtract that from the total and we end up with our two's complement with a negative seven as opposed to the nine that we got with the same string of bits over here as an unsigned integer. So here's another example. We want to keep in mind that the most significant bit is that sign bit like we just talked about. A zero is the most significant bit, indicates a non-negative number, while a one indicates a negative number. So let's take a look at how this uh, so kind of longer string of bits looks when we, uh, in the next slide, when we actually add up those weights. 
So this shows the application of the B2T of X function, the bits to two's complement. The weight is equal to two to the power of the bit index. Notice that the weight of the most significant bit, which is way down here at the bottom of the table, is negative. So we're just going to multiply our values, our ones or zeros, multiplied by their weights, and then add the whole thing up. So we've got a one here, we end up with a one. We have a one times the weight of four, we end up with a four. One times a weight of eight, we end up with the eight. Add all of that together, again, noticing that that bottom value is negative. So that most significant bit, that is gonna be negative. So we just count that in the sum. So for positive 15,213, we just have positive numbers that add up, so that's not a problem. With the negative 15,213, we add things up, and as we're adding down this row with these weights times the values, we keep getting a bigger and bigger number, but then down at the bottom, because that most significant bit is negative, we end up with a negative number once we add it all together. So let's take a look at the numeric ranges that are possible based on how we represent things. Um, so we've got our unsigned values and our two's complement values that we wanna keep, make sure that we kinda keep straight. So the minimum, the lowest possible value of an unsigned integer is zero, which just is represented by a string of nothing but zeros. The maximum value is two to the word, power of the word size minus one. So if the word size is four, we can get up to two to the four is 16, uh, minus one is 15, and we know 15 is in fact the highest value we can get in a four bit integer representation. So that's just the maximum of an unsigned is just gonna be a string of ones. Now that is different from the two's complement values. So the minimum of a two's complement value is gonna start with a one and the rest will be zeros. So that ends up mathematically looking like negative two to the w minus one power. The maximum of a two complement is going to be a zero, because remember zero means we have a positive number, and the rest of the bits being filled with ones. So that's two to the w minus one minus one. So as opposed to a four bit unsigned integer, which is just a four ones, which gives us a 15, the highest we can get with a four bit unsigned, or a four bit two's complement value is a, well, let's take a look at it, one, plus two, plus four, the highest value we can get is seven out of four bits in two's complement. And the lowest value we can get is one time, one plus uh, three zeros. Remember the one, which is in the eights place, is negative, so negative eight would be the lowest value we could get. Um, something else to kind of keep in mind and take a look at is basically how does two's complement deal with negative one? And negative one, basically just, it looks like a string of nothing but ones. So in contrast to the unsigned maximum, the maximum value of an unsigned integer is a bunch of ones. In two's complement, a bunch of ones always ends up being minus one. Now this table down here for values of 16 bit, or of 16 -bit words, will show you what these look like in binary decimal uh, and hex a decimal so that you can Take a look at that and make sure you understand this. So this table is just another one to kind of take a look at and study. This just shows us the maximum values uh, for unsigned and twos complement integers and the minimum value for twos complement integers, uh, depending on the word size that you're dealing with. Uh, you can take a look at these uh, observations. The absolute value of the minimum value of a two's complement is equal to the maximum value plus one. Uh, and it's an asymmetric range. That means that you actually have more on one side than you do on another. So keep in mind that we have an asymmetric range with uh, two's complement values. And let's take a look at what that looks like and what that means. So what we're talking about when we talk about that asymmetric range is we can go to a value of seven. Now, we're, again, we're talking about our two's complement column here. 
and we can go to a positive value of 7 but a negative value of negative 8. So we do want to keep in mind that we've got, now indeed we have 16 values, we have 8 negative values, we have 8 non-negative values, but keep in mind that one of those is 0. So that we always, we can only ever get to, if we have negative 8, we can only get to a positive 7. And that is what that expression on the previous slide kind of looks like as far as when we talk about that range. Um, some, some properties that we see as far as unsigned and signed numeric values um, are as follows. We have equivalence, which means the same encodings for non-negative values. Okay, so that's what this green area here looks like. So this, this area that's shaded in green, we see that the same bit pattern gives us the same result for both unsigned and for two's complement integer values. That's what we talk about when we say equivalence. Now uniqueness just means that every bit pattern represents a unique inter integer value and vice versa. So you're never going to have a bit pattern that represents two different unsigned integer values um, or two different two's complement values. Now we can certainly, as we can see, we can have one bit pattern here once we start getting into where our sign bit becomes a thing for the two's complement, we can end up with a different between the values of unsigned and two's complement, but you'll never have a unsigned integer that has the same rep bit representation as another unsigned integer. And we can invert these mappings. We can go from one to the other. We can start with a bit pattern and get to either a signed or two's con an unsigned or two's complement value, and we can go the other way. So that does it for the first part of section two of chapter two of your textbook. In the next video, video number three of our chapter two series, we'll talk about the rest of section two of chapter two.